Learn how to plan your YouTube videos on Notion with all the tips and tricks from these great creators and we're starting right now. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. The links to all the creators channels will be in the description below so let's get started. The video creation process from idea to published video is quite a long one and there's lots of things involved. A piece of advice given by Roberto Blake is actually to have a list of different video ideas. And that's exactly what we have at the top of the setup. But instead of having a long list of ideas, I've actually incorporated Lavender's workflow by incorporating ideas, good ideas and going to do ideas. This means I can have loads of different ideas but they all have different stages. Some of them may just be a beginning idea, some of them have had some thought, some of them might be a good idea and then there are ideas that I actually want to make into videos. For those of you unfamiliar with Notion, this is a board view database and you can add new pieces of data at the bottom of any column by just clicking the new button. So when I first have an idea, I can add it in. Now there won't be a light bulb because I haven't investigated that idea that much, it's just there as a note. Then when I want to investigate and pursue that idea a little bit more, I can click on it and open up the page, click on the new video template and now it puts a light bulb at the top of the idea. It does also add in a lot of stuff at the bottom of the page but we'll get into a bit of that a little bit later. So once I have that idea in the list you can see I have a qualified checkbox. That is something consistent across all YouTube coach creators. Make sure your idea is matched to your audience and matches your value proposition. So you can see the qualifying tools have now been put into this page. You can see Morning Fame, TubeBuddy, VidIQ are three big obvious ones to use when looking at keyword research or anything like that to qualify your idea. And by pushing on those links, it will take you straight there. Then once you've qualified the idea and it's more likely to be a video, you can tick the checkbox. What that does is put the idea all the way to the top of the list because that's how I've sorted the database. So I can see all the qualified ideas at the top. Then once I've decided the idea is actually a pretty good idea, I can just move the tile across. Maybe at this point I actually want to combine two ideas into one video rather than making two videos. So I can just look at the two ideas, combine the content and make some notes in one of the pages and then just delete the other idea. Then once I'm happy with the idea and I'm actually going to make it into a video, I can move it to the going to do section. Now because this database is likely to be really long, especially with Roberto Blake suggesting to have 100 video ideas, it could fill up quite a lot of space. So what I'm going to do is change the view of the database so I can only see the ideas that I'm going to do and that are qualified. And I've done that by adding a filter in the database view saying qualified is ticked and quality is going to do. Now I've got rid of that long list of ideas and I've just got the ideas I want to turn into videos, I can actually just click and drag that down into my calendar. And now that it's moved from the ideas database to the project database, the properties have changed. So now I have a date on it with the URL. So when I've published it, I could put the URL of the YouTube video in there to go back to it and video number if I want to keep track of how many I've done. But that's just the process of turning it from an idea into an actual video that you're going to do. The creation process of a video has loads of things involved in it and what I've done is I've put them all in this one space. So you can see I've got the script in the main section and I've got some tick boxes to make sure that I've done certain things such as have a hook at the beginning of the video, call to action at the beginning or potentially at the end or in the middle somewhere. And the purpose of the video actually matches the audience that I want the video to go to. Then in the actual script, I've just got some bullet points down there. Obviously, if you want to write a whole script, you can do. But the advice given from Brian G is actually just to have some bullet points so you have some points to talk from. And as Sean and Benji say on Video Influencers, research before you push record. So we've got our research section over here. You can see you can research load of key phrases, put them in there. So you can research all the key phrases you may want to map to a potential title using TubeBuddy, VidIQ, Morning Fame to put in some scores for each keyword. Or you could create your own score using volume competition and then generating your own emoji. Obviously you want the search volume of that keyword to be high because you want lots of people to be looking for it. But you don't want the competition to be high because then it might be hard to rank so you actually want lower competition. So if we found another keyword phrase we could put that in the keyword box, select the search volume, select the competition and then the formula is going to generate a nice emoji. The star being the best, the red buzzer being the worst and you've got some emojis in the middle. You can change that to numbers whatever suits you, that's just an example. So now we've turned our idea into a video, we've researched our idea, we've got some keywords for our titles, we've thought about our purpose of the video and our script and what we're actually going to say in the video, but are there any additional notes that we need to think about? So pacing changes, maybe you want to be really quick on one specific topic, but then you want to be slightly slower and more explanatory in something a little bit more complicated. Some other additional notes, so maybe some title ideas or things you want to include in your description, like references or other YouTube channels. Then any structural changes or differences. Maybe you're inside, maybe you're outside, and that could link to the B-roll. And this is inspired by Thomas Frank's video on his Notion setup and how he and his team work with Notion to get YouTube videos done. Essentially, you can put your timestamp in, 
put the location of where you're going to record the b-roll if you're recording it and if you're not going to record it maybe it's a stock image and you're just going to put the location of the website that you're going to get the stock image from now we have another little bit of planning from Nick Nemen, which is about promoting watch time by linking other videos in cards, end screens, description, or a pinned comment at the bottom of the video. Maybe you want to plan out specific videos that are related to the one that you're creating. And on that note, I've done a video on a weekly planner, so if that's something you're interested to hear about, check out that video. Once you've planned out your video, the published date may change, so you can go back into your calendar view and just move the tile across. That automatically changes the date, but everything else related to the video will stay the same. To learn how Notion can help you be a little bit more productive, make sure you check this video out over here, and I'll see you there.